This is our holiday special tutorial. It's not exactly architecture related, but it has lots of interesting grasshopper tips and tricks and I'm sure that you will find them valuable. What better way of finishing this year other than a parametric Christmas tree? If you want to see the complete process, make sure to stay until the end because we're also going to show you the complete process for 3D printing. Let's start by creating the base geometry for our script. First we need a center point, so I place a point container and then plug it into an XY plane. This will be our reference plane for the polygon. To define the polygon we need two more things, the size and the number of sides. For the size I've added number slider called radius, which I've set to 9 for now. And for the number of sides I've got another slider labeled segments, currently set to 20. These sliders allow us to control the polygon dynamically. Next we need to extract the corner points of the polygon. To do that I'm using this continuity component. To create star-like shape I'm using shift pattern component with 0-1 pattern, which splits the list of vertices in two separate groups but keeping their index. Then I take one group of points and bring it slightly inwards using scale component. The scaling center is the average point of that group of points. And I will add slider that controls scaling strength. To place them back in the list of vertices I use the combined data component. Now connect the combined points to a polyline component to form the new shape. Make sure to check invert to create a closed polyline. Next I will add one polygon at the top and one at the bottom. To do this I am using two move components. The direction of the movement is set using a unit set component which moves things vertically. The moving distance for the top one is based on the polygon radius and the multiply is set to 0.5. For the bottom one I repeat the same process but this time I reverse the direction. I am controlling this movement with another slider multiplied by polygon radius and feel free to tweak these sliders later. Now I want to offset the top and the bottom curves inwards which means we need to use a negative offset distance. These distances will be determined by multiply the polygon radius with the multiplier for each curve. Let's combine polygons into a single data tree using the end vine component. Make sure to plug them in the following order. Top offset polygon goes to branch 0, original polygon goes to branch 1 and the bottom offset polygon goes to branch 2. If we flatten the output and loft these three curves using straight loft type, we'll get the first model placed at the bottom. But we want to get this, which means we need to have the right scaling factor for all the other models and precise height where these models will be stacked. Let's focus on the first two models to figure out the rules we'll follow. First, notice that the second model is rotated by an angle equal to the central angle of the polygon. Next, it is scaled so that the inner vertices of its middle curve align with the outer vertices of the top curve in the first model. Lastly, it is moved vertically so that its middle curve aligns with the top of the first model. Now let's do this in grasshopper. To determine the correct scaling factor, first we take the middle polygon and rotate it by the central angle of the polygon calculated as 360 divided by the number of segments. Make sure to set degrees. The rotation plane is XY with the origin at the base point. Next, we project the rotated middle polygon to the height where the top polygon is located. After that, let's scale down the project polygon so that it fits inside the top polygon. To do this, we'll find the ratio between two distances. Let's call them distance A and distance B. Here's how we'll do it step by step. First, we need to work with the corner points of the projected polygon. To get those, I will extract all the points using this continuity component. Once we have the points, the next step is to sort them based on their distance from the center point of the polygon. Once sorted, I will take the first item from the list, which is the closest point to the center. From here, we can calculate distance A, the distance between this point and the center of the polygon. To determine distance B, we'll take the same point and pull it onto the top polygon using pull point component. This gives us the point that sits directly on the top polygon. From there, we can measure distance B, which is the distance from the pull point back to the center. The ratio between these two distances will give us the perfect scaling factor to shrink the projected polygon so it fits nicely inside the top polygon. 
To stack the models on top of each other, we need to remember that each one will be slightly smaller than the one below it based on the scaling factor we just calculated. So, let's set how many iterations we'll have by repeating the scaling factor. Let me clarify. To create the second model, we scale down the first one using the scaling factor we calculated. To create the next model on the third level, we multiply the scaling factor by itself. To set the number of iterations, we repeat the scaling factor as needed. To determine the scaling factor for each level, we use mass multiplication and the partial result output give us the values we need. Finally, we need to add number 1 at the start of the list to preserve the original size of the first model. Now we can scale and the scaling center will be the center of the bottom polygon. Don't forget to flip the matrix to get 3 poly lines in each branch. To better visualize what we have so far, I suggest creating a loft surface using the straight loft type. Now we need to move each model vertically so that its middle poly line aligns with the top poly line of the next larger model. To achieve this, we need to use relative item component. This will enable us to measure the distance between points that are in different branches. Specifically, we need to measure the distance from the center of the middle polygon of one model to the center of the top polygon of the next larger model. The relative offset will be set to minus 1 for both branches and index. Once we have the distances, we'll take the first one. Since we are stacking the models on top of each other, we'll use mass addition to calculate the cumulative distances. Don't forget to flatten the list. The partial result output gives us the values we need, but make sure that the data structure matches the tree of distances since the branch 0 is missing. Lastly, we'll add 0 at the start of the list to preserve the position of the first model. These values will then be used as the amplitudes of the Z vectors to move all the models vertically. In the next step, every second model needs to be rotated by the center angle of the polygon. To achieve this, let's create a list that alternates between 0 and the angle value. That list will have the same number of items as the number of models. Don't forget to check degrees. The rotation plane is XY with the origin at the base point. Once the final positions are set, let's cap holes and create close b reps. Our next step is to create a tree tip. So first, we need the top face of the top model. The top model is the last in the list, so I will use the index minus 1. Now we need to select its top face. Let's use the evaluate box and in the W input, which evaluates box along Z axis, I will place number 1. Once we get a point on the top face, we can use the edges from face component to extract all the edges of that face. After that, we'll join the edges together and use the boundary surface component to create a surface from them. Now we need to extrude that surface to a point that will be the tip of our tree. To define the point, we need to extract all edges of the top model and create vectors based on their endpoints. From these vectors, we filter out those with a Z component equal to zero using inequality condition. Next, we take the remaining edges join them and explode them to get two edges in each branch. At this point, we sort these edges based on the z-coordinate of their midpoints. Since the list sorts in ascending order by default, we reverse it and extract the first item from each branch. Or you can take item at the index one. Now we'll place all the lines into a single list, so click on flatten. From here, I'll take the first two lines and extend them. The extension length should be slightly larger so I'll use the polygon radius as the value. The intersection of these extended lines give us the 3 tip point, which will plug it into the extrude point component. To wrap things up, I will place the tip geometry and the stacked model geometry into a single list. By applying solid union and merge faces, we'll merge all these shapes into a clean single close B wrap as the final result.
Now, if you want to dive deeper, we also have a special extended version of this tutorial on our Patreon page that will show you how to parametrically attach Christmas tree ornaments and the tree topper star. With that, you will get full access to all project files from all our tutorials. The link is in the description. Okay, guys, so now let me show you how we would prepare this project for 3D printing. The first thing that I have here, I have three layers in my Rhino window. So I have tree, star, and ornaments. And I'm simply going to bake my existing geometry from Grasshopper into Rhino. So I'm gonna go here, and this is gonna be the ornaments. I'm gonna right click, bake, put on the ornaments layer, click a group here, yes please, click OK. Now we have those baked. I'm gonna do the same thing for the star on the top. Right click, bake, and let's choose the star. And the last is going to be the actual tree, which is here on top. Right click, bake, and put it on a tree layer. Now I'm gonna close my grasshopper. I don't need it anymore. And now you will see that we have the ornaments, we have the tree, and we also have this guy. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to simply do here Boolean split for this guy. And I'm going to take out this piece. I'm going to ungroup this first and take out this top. Obviously, this star needs to go inside. That's why we created it this way, because that's uh, easier than if you would do multicolor printing, because it's very, very thin. And I'm afraid that it's not going to be able to print well. So that's why we're going to do it in, in two ways. So all of these uh, elements are going to be printed as a multicolor print with two colors. And this is going to be a separate thing. So whenever you have a situation like this, you need to first test out if this gap is going to fit. So what I usually do, I like to do a couple of uh, short printing tests to see what is the best gap here. So if you just leave it like this, it's not going to work. There should always be some gap. So I'm going to simply copy this over like this and I'm going to cut it from here. I'm going to create one line like this and I'm simply going to cut it this way. Now I just have this part, right? And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to also do curve boolean and I'm going to pick that circle. Okay. And now that circle, I'm going to offset. I'm going to offset it for, let's say one or actually let's say 0 0.2. And that's going to be this other one. And I'm going to use this curve to do boolean split. Once I do boolean split, I'm going to have, I'm going to be left with this. Okay, this is one one element that I want to test out. So what I would do, I would actually print this as one single piece, and then I would also print this part of the star, just this cylinder, and I would test those. So in this case, that would look something like this. Now let's say that I simply take a cut here. That's going to be enough here. So I'm simply going to cut the star here. Let me show you. I'm going to cut it like this, and I'm going to ungroup it and cut the top and these guys. So now I have these two elements. I'm going to separately print this one and I'm going to separately print this one. Then I'm going to try to actually physically fit it. It's probably not going to work from the first from the first try. So what I usually do, I make a couple of different prints, small prints like this. So the first print is going to be, for example, 0.1 millimeter, a gap. So I'm going to, for example, copy this a couple of times. Let's do totally three. This is the original. So I'm going to take this duplicate border and I'm going to do offset actually let's do 0 0.01 that's 0 0.1 millimeter because we're working here in centimeters this one is going to be duplicate border I'm going to do 0 0.02 and here I'm going to do again duplicate border offset this is 0 0.03 okay I'm going to actually use I'm going to use annotate dot just to know what I'm working with so I would usually say this is 0 0.1 millimeter just so I know for myself and then I would copy this over here and I would copy it over here so I know uh, what is the model that I need to change right so this is 0 0.1 this is about 0 0.2 0 0.3 and now these guys I'm going to simply take all of them and I'm going to do extrude curve and I'm going to bring them down like this okay and then I'm going to do boolean difference and I'm going to do boolean difference with the green one so now what I'm doing I'm actually creating space for this star to to fit in and you see when I it you see what I did there I, I drilled a hole and every single hole is sl slightly bigger now I'm going to simply print each one of these and I will know which one is fitting perfectly once I know what that number is then I'm going to implement that on my model so it turned out that 0.2 millimeter gap is the best one the best fitting one so I'm going to use that I'm going to go here and I'm going to simply hide it for a second I'm going to select the circle I'm going to say duplicate border offset and I'm going to do 0.03 there we go and now I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to extrude it up like this. 
and then I'm simply going to do boolean split and I'm going to remove this part. And now we know for sure that this is going to be a perfect fit. Now we're ready to actually export all of this. So we'd export this in two ways. The first one is going to be the star and then the second one are going to be the ornaments and the tree. Okay, now we're ready to export this. The first thing we need to do here is we need to check our units. We need to make sure we have the correct units. So this is centimeters. So we need to modify these to millimeters because Bamboo Lab Studio actually reads millimeters. So I'm gonna go and modify that to millimeters. I'm gonna click okay. And I'm gonna use this option to change unit system and maintain object sizes. And now you'll just simply see that before this was 0 0.01, now it's 0 0.1. So for example, if I do offset and if I do 0 0.1, you'll see that's gonna be the same distance. Now. We take the star file, export selected. Now we simply put a name, star v1. And we also do the same thing for the tree and the ornaments. File, export selected. And we can call it tree v1 as well. Now all we need to do is actually go to the Bamboo Lab. And one last thing would be to drag and drop these guys. So I'm going to simply take the tree from here drag and drop it and that's going to be ready. Now you will notice here that we're going to do multicolor which means that we need to specify the colors. Here we already have two filaments in our setting so if you want to add more you can do so. You can simply click here on the plus it's going to add more filaments. For now we're simply going to use these two and the way that this works you need to uh, make sure that you use this color painting and you want to use the color that you have. So for example if I have red color here I'm going to choose fill and I'm simply going to click on the ornaments. Once I click once on the ornaments, they're going to be completely colored, as you can see. And these ornaments are going to print together with the tree. So this means that we don't need to manually attach them. We simply print them together. And the only drawback of this approach would be that this will take much longer. If you just simply glue them, that's going to be quicker, but that's going to be maybe a little bit more difficult. So it depends on if you want to glue them yourself, that would probably be a faster option. Or if you want to do multicolor print, that's also good. But keep in mind that when you do multicolor prints, you're actually spending so much more filament than before. I'm specifically talking about Bamboo Lab printers. When they print, they actually have this uh, purging material that goes out. So it actually takes a lot of more material. So now I'm going to keep all of my settings as default uh, and I'm going to click on slice plate to see what we're gonna get. Now you'll see that everything is ready and if I check out the layers here you can see here how the layering is gonna look like. You see that let's say if I go to one of these ornaments you can see how it's actually starting to go inside from here and then it's gonna interwoven together, right? So that's the process of doing the multicolor prints. The problem with this one is that as you can see here, it's gonna take 19 hours and it's gonna take around 374 grams of filament. And almost one third of that is actually gonna be purged, which means that we're losing 30% of filament if we're doing multi-layer prints and it's taking longer. So that was the process. Now all you need to do is actually click on the print plate and then choose your colors in your AMS and click on send that's going to start the print and of course you would also do the same process with the star but the star is just going to be one material okay so here are some final shots of our 3d printed christmas tree i hope that you guys uh, enjoyed this process and you enjoyed the tutorial i wish you all happy holidays spend some time with your friends and family and we'll see you in the new year with lots of new content and tutorials take care